it doesn't have to be the lead single to steal our hearts. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 underrated songs from popular musicals. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the hidden gems that never quite get the love they deserve in hit productions. We're basing our choices on the popularity of the musicals themselves, the quality of the tracks, and the details that earn them a second look. Many of these songs contain important plot elements, so a spoiler warning is in effect. It's one more dance and then farewell, cheeks and cheek and hell with a dead girl! Number 10. No One Is Alone, Into the Woods Mother cannot guide you now you're on your own. Near the end of Into the Woods, the baker and Cinderella give a comforting reality check to Jack and Little Red Riding Hood. No One Is Alone contrasts the musical's fantasy elements with an honest lesson about finding strength in others. Though the messages about growing up and facing the complexities of the world are heavy, the track remains hopeful too. Witches can be right, giants can be good, you decide what's right. You decide what's good. Vocals and instruments build beautiful harmonies, while every voice gets a moment to themselves as well. No One Is Alone is also an important moment of emotional growth in the story that delivers the powerful melodies to match. They are not, not alone. alone. No, no one, one is alone. alone. Number 9. A Little Fall of Rain, Les Miserables. Don't you fret. Monsieur Marius, I don't feel any pain. Eponine is shot in a frantic moment and sings her final song as she dies in Marius' arms. In his shock, Marius finally offers Eponine love in the hope that it could help her live. With her life at an end and Marius holding her, Eponine can't seem to feel any pain, however. And you will keep me safe. And you will keep me close. I'll sleep in your embrace at last. While Eponine's final breaths are with someone she loves, the moment is bittersweet since he doesn't truly love her back. The rain, in effect, becomes a poetic stand in for all of Eponine's troubles, which seem trivial in her last seconds. In a musical full of tragic moments, a little fall of rain shines thanks to its clever wordplay and subtlety. We'll make the flower. Whoa. Number 8. Requiem. Dear Evan Hansen. Why should I play this game of pretend? Remembering through a secondhand sorrow. In the wake of Connor's suicide, each of his family members responds to the death in their own unique way. His sister Zoe remembers Connor as an aggressive and mean person and chooses not to mourn a monster. Father Larry doesn't understand his son's depression and ultimately sees Connor as ungrateful for his wealthy upbringing. Everything wasted, nothing to say. Connor's mother Cynthia, however, finds comfort in Evan's fictitious email exchange with her son. Though she's able to move forward with her life, Cynthia unfortunately only does so through a lie. The frustrations and acceptance of each character culminate in confident vocals and are aided by the dynamic, loud drums. By showing each character's personality through their reaction to Connor, Requiem is a surprisingly revealing song. I will sing no Requiem tonight. Oh. Number 7. Razzle Dazzle, Chicago. Give them the old As Billy Flynn prepares Roxy for her court appearance, he sings about the power of wowing audiences. While Razzle Dazzle sounds like it's about show business, Flynn's advice has more to do with winning over juries. 
Through Roxy's love of performance, Billy explains how she can confuse judges and make people believe any story she wants. What if your hinges all are rusting? What if, in fact, you're just disgusting? Razzle dazzle them, and they'll never catch why. Despite the classic Broadway tones of this track, its themes about law tactics are actually quite smart. Though Billy's number is overshadowed by all the strong women in Chicago, Razzle Dazzle is a deceptively fun tune that highlights the power of good acting. And I'll make you a Number 6. Run and Tell That, Hairspray. I can't see people look at me and only see the color of my face. Yes, they do. After Seaweed meets Tracy and Penny, he breaks into an exciting number about fighting racism. Rather than asking for acceptance, Run and Tell That finds Seaweed shouting with pride for the color of his skin. He praises how interesting people of color can be while comparing them to fruit and chocolate. Inez's solo is even more energetic, as the song kicks into a bridge about finding equality between everyone. Run and Tell That has the same upbeat funk of other Hairspray tracks, but its over-the-top performances and socially conscious lyrics are some of the musical's most engaging. Number 5. Thank goodness, Wicked. Oh, what a celebration we'll have today. Glinda celebrates how well her life is turning out, but there's an unsettling notion behind her happiness. Her marriage has her feeling happier than ever, but she knows that her fiance isn't truly in love with her. But I couldn't be happier. Simply couldn't be happier. Glinda says she has her dream life, but she's also torn up about leaving Alphaba behind. Amongst all of her doubt, the seemingly excited villagers are actually spreading rumors behind Glinda's back. There are bridges you cross you didn't know you crossed until you crossed. Though March of the Witch Hunters is a great ensemble piece, showcasing the most underrated of cast members. <laughs> Linda's song has a much more complicated emotion to it. While she's often seen as the popular witch, Thank Goodness shows more nuance and depth to Glinda. Number 4. Notes and Prima Donna, The Phantom of the Opera Andre and Firma are losing their minds reading notes from the Phantom, which critique Carlotta's performances. The letter hilariously insists that Carlotta play the page boy in the opera, since it's a silent role. The role of the page boy is silent, which makes my casting in a word Despite all the blackmail, the threatening notes also joke about how people hate receiving letters. With Carlotta's ego broken, Firma and Andre start singing her praise to get her to perform again. Prima Donna, first lady on the stage, your devotees are on their knees to implore you. Every line plays to her addiction with fame as Carlotta whines about her professional hardships. The song becomes so exaggerated to appease Carlotta that soon the entire city is singing to her. Between Phantom's savage insults and the backhanded compliments of Prima Donna, Notes is easily one of the funniest moments in the Phantom of the Opera. Number 3. The Election of 1800, Hamilton. Every action has its equal opposite reaction. John Adams, the bed. I love the guy, but he's in traction. For the election of 1800, people are talking about different candidates and tensions are running high. We see Aaron Burr starting to take action, while Thomas Jefferson worries about dealing with the public. 
Jefferson cleverly rants about knowing where France is, while also revealing why people find him indelible. Alexander Hamilton drops poetic lines about endorsing Jefferson, which brilliantly summarize letters from the real Hamilton. If you were to ask me who I promote, Jefferson has my vote. All the chorus chants of Well, I'll Be Damned match the building excitement of the song's story and beats. doesn't have the Latin hip-hop fusion of Lin-Manuel Miranda's Blackout and In the Heights, this Hamilton track brings plenty of attitude. The condensed and entertaining history of the election of 1800 is a true wonder of pop writing. It is crazy that the guy who comes in second gets to be vice president. Ooh, you know what? We could change that! You know why? Why? Because I am the president. Number 2. Something's Coming. West Side Story. There's something due any day I will know right away. Tony is looking to leave gang life behind and starts shaking with anticipation at where his life could go next. The raw sense of happiness and life that grips Tony comes through as much in his shouted lines as his whispered ones. He even swings some vocals and creates huge crescendos on others. Around the corner, It's also interesting to see Tony express his joy through not only his singing, but his wild body movements too. While Maria is seen as Tony's big musical number, there's a lot more spirit and personality in this song. Something's Coming is an exhilarating listen because of how well it matches its music to its emotions. Maybe too long. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. If I hadn't believed in you, I wouldn't have loved you at all. Cause there's one thing you ain't that I'll always be, and honey, yeah, that's right. That's right. Number one, will I rent? Will I lose my dignity? Steve begins singing to his disease support group, airing out real issues in his life through song. Though the looping lyrics of Will I feel simple, they're used to capture the vicious cycle the characters find themselves in. Will I Wake Tomorrow is repeated heavily throughout the song, as a reflection of both limited time and trying to find optimism. While the solo intro starts the song on a pretty dire note, the additions from the chorus help keep the song positive. Through its mix of desperation and unity, Will I presents a realistic and memorable look at life with AIDS. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.